What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be walking through the steps that I follow to mill custom PCBs on my Snapmaker original CNC machine. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist, and if you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, if you're interested in getting the machine that I'm using today, check out the review that I did on it in this video here. In one of my earlier videos, I made a camera slider to help me get better B-roll shots of my projects, and to save some time on the electronics part of that project, I decided to order custom PCBs from JLC PCB. If you're not familiar with JLC PCB, they are a company that will manufacture custom circuit boards for you for a super low price. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I have used their service and I found it super convenient. Anyways, I decided to revisit my camera slider build because I initially made it with an A4988 stepper motor driver and I wanted to swap that out for a TMC2209 driver. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the existing PCB I designed to work with the TMC2209, so I needed a new PCB. And since I recently got the Snapmaker and started doing some CNC routing with it, I decided to try and make my own PCBs rather than ordering them. In this video, I'm only going to be doing a single-sided design because I don't want to mess with having to flip the board over to route the other side. So if the circuit that you need to route is more complex than mine, you might not be able to configure it to work on a single side of the PCB. To get started, I opened up EasyEDA, which is the free online tool that I use for my circuit designs, and I copied the original camera slider schematic into a new project. I altered it a little bit to work with the TMC2209 driver, and I created a new PCB from that schematic. I then placed all the components into their places within the board outline and used the auto router to get a quick start on the routing for the circuit. The auto router certainly isn't perfect, but it's usually a pretty good starting point from which you can get a workable circuit design. There were a few spots where I needed to add some clearance or get rid of a 90 degree bend, but after some tweaking, I had a design that was ready to download. The last thing I did before downloading the circuit was to increase the track width to 0.5 millimeters, just to give the stat maker a little bit more room for error or vibration. I'm not sure that this step is 100% necessary, but I found that it helped ensure that the V-bit didn't accidentally remove all the copper from the traces I was trying to make. At this point, I should mention that since I'm only making a single-sided PCB, all of my tracks are being added to the bottom layer. That way I can place components on the top of the PCB and solder them from the bottom. Next, I generated the Gerber file, which is an open ASCII vector file specifically created for PCB layouts. The Gerber file holds information for each of the copper layers and the solder mask, as well as data for each of the holes to be drilled. Once I had all the Gerber files downloaded, that's where the fun actually begins. To convert the Gerber files into a CNC file that the Snapmaker can use, I used an open source program called FlatCam. The process of getting FlatCam installed on my 2015 MacBook Pro was sort of a pain in the but after some searching online, I finally found a different branch on FlatCam's official repository that contained the updates I needed to get it running on my machine. I won't cover that process in this video because it required several commands to be run in the terminal, but I'll have my documentation linked in the description if you find yourself in a similar situation. So anyways, once I got FlatCam installed on my machine, the rest of this process was incredibly straightforward. At first glance, it could look overwhelming, but I promise it's not difficult at all, so bear with me. First, from within FlatCam, I opened the bottom layer Gerber file, which will display it for you in the plotting area, as well as add a new item under the project panel on the left. Before I did anything else, I selected the bottom layer Gerber object and clicked Options, Flip on X axis. This step is necessary because the Gerber file represents a top view of the bottom layer, so everything will be mirrored from what the bottom actually looks like. Once the file has been mirrored, I selected it again and clicked Edit, Move to Origin, so I had a nice starting point and a small offset from the origin. Next, in the project panel again, I double-clicked on the bottom layer, which brings me over to the Properties tab, where I selected Isolation Routing. In this tab, 
I left everything at its default settings, made sure I had a V-bit selected, and scrolled to the bottom to generate the geometry. This should immediately bring you to the Properties tab for the geometry you just created. But if not, you can also find the new geometry object in the Projects tab under Geometry. You should also notice that the geometry is now visible in the plotting area as a thin outline around the initial Gerber file. If you find that some areas are not correctly outlined by the geometry, you may need to recreate the isolation routing with some altered parameters. But if the geometry looks good, then you should be ready to create the CNC job object from that geometry. So to do this, you can either double click on the geometry object in the project panel or select it and switch to the properties tab. For my PCB, I'll be using a V-bit for the isolation routing. And so it's worth mentioning here that the cut Z height will be automatically calculated from the geometry of the V-bit. You can't actually update the value unless you change the tip diameter or the angle. I found that a tip diameter of 0.03 was just about perfect because it resulted in the tip cutting about 0.1 millimeters deep into the PCB. I dropped the feed rate down to 60 to make sure I took my time with the initial cut, and then I scrolled down and created the last object we need by clicking Generate CNC Job Object. This will once again create a new object in the Project tab under CNC Job, and then you can save that CNC program by either double-clicking on the CNC Job or selecting it and switching to the Properties tab. At the bottom, you'll see the option to save the CNC code, which will create a .nc file that you can then put on a USB stick for your CNC machine to use. At this point, I have a CNC file ready to run on my Snapmaker, but before I do, I still need to create the CNC program to drill all the holes in my PCB, as well as cut the board outline. To prepare the CNC file for drilling all the holes in my PCB, I opened the Exelon file for the drill path, mirrored it the same way I did the bottom layer, and manually aligned it so that the holes were drilled in the correct spots. I couldn't actually find a better way to align the two designs, but if I turned off the grid snapping, it was easy enough to move the drill path into the correct position. Once there, I repeated the steps from before to create a drilling tool CNC object. For this, I used the same bit for all the holes, so I just selected each of the hole sizes and configured the cut Z to be two millimeters. This way it cut all the way through the board with the same size each time. After generating the CNC job object, I now had a program for routing the tracks and drilling the holes of the circuit board. I could stop here, but I also wanted to cut out the shape of the board, so I had one more file to create. To do this, I opened the boardoutline.gko file, aligned it with the other designs, and opened up the properties panel. This time, instead of clicking the isolation routing option, I selected the cutout tool configured the tool diameter to match the bit I planned on using, configured the cut Z height, and generated the last geometry object. Lastly, I made sure the parameters for the board outline CNC object were correct and generated that CNC job object as well. Now, after all that crazy stuff, there are just three files that I care about. The bottom layer CNC job, the drill path CNC job, and the board outline CNC job all of which can be found in the project tab under CNC job. I made sure to save each of those .nc files on a USB stick, and I was then ready to move on to the actual fun part of this project. From here, everything was relatively straightforward. The first thing I did was ensure I had a level work surface by attaching a spoil board with some thin double-sided tape and leveling it with a simple rectangle I created in Lubin. Next, I mounted the PCB blank to the spoil board with the same double-sided tape moved the bit to the origin point, and started the bottom layer CNC job. With that complete, I swapped out the V-bit for the flat end mill that I wanted to use for drilling the holes. I adjusted the Z height and started the drilling CNC job. It's important that you make sure not to move the X or the Y coordinates after you swap the bit because it may be hard to get back into the same origin point which could throw off your whole PCB. Wow. 
Once all of the holes had been drilled, I swapped bits one more time, adjusted the Z height to account for the differing bit lengths and started the last CNC job. So following these steps, if I get lucky and everything goes to plan, I end up with a custom milled PCB that saves me a lot of time and potentially a lot of money over ordering from a company. I've only tried this with single sided PCBs, so if any of my projects are too complex to fit on a single side, I'll either have to learn how to adjust this process to work for double sided PCBs, or I'll just order from JLC PCB again. On top of that, the designs that you'll get on a milled PCB often take up more space than a printed circuit board. So if space is a concern for you, you might not have much luck milling your own PCBs. If you're following along and trying to mill a PCB yourself, you may have to mess with the bit diameter or other parameters to get it to work specifically for you. I showed you what worked for me, but I've also heard a lot of people that have trouble with the V-bit and end up using a small flat end mill instead to do the isolation routing. I'll have links in the description for all of the bits that you might need, as well as the circuit board blanks that I used. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to catch all my new content. And if you're interested in following these steps, check the description for a full write-up of everything I did in this video. Also, let me know in the comments if you know a better way to do anything in this video. After all, I'm not an expert at any of this stuff, so if you have knowledge to share, I'd be more than happy to hear it. Lastly, check out my Patreon page and my merchandise store if you're interested in supporting this channel further, or if you just want some awesome modern hobbyist merchandise like this. Otherwise, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.